Right, assalamu alaikum people. I, uh, I'm hoping to read an article from the Leadership Magazine um, of October 2004. Uh, but before I, I, I can do that, uh, I must let you know that I actually asked special permission from the uh, publishers and I received an email in which the permission was granted to me to actually read this particular article which they published in 2004, October, uh, regarding um, youth upliftment. Uh, an article that was written by one of the uh, co-writers, Harafa Pakir, who in our particular uh, knowledge is actually the son of Sheikh M. A. Fakir who wrote the um, Salah manual and fasting, the, the manual of Salah and fasting. We ask Allah to grant him the Jannah, inshallah. And this is his son. They stayed in London for, for quite a while, a while. And his son was actually um, present in, uh, in a talk, in a public talk that I did on youth uh, development in 2004. Now, uh, um, if if one looks at the uh, the article which is called um, uh, youth upliftment um, seeking the path from the democratic franchise to personal empowerment I decided to do a public talk on this and invited some key professors uh, to to come and give uh, talks on their own as well in order to support the particular idea and uh, also community members and I was grateful that they attended actually. People that were in this particular meeting with, with me or uh, presented with me was Professor Yasin Muhammad which was actually my Arabic lecturer and then Professor Yusuf Wahid who is was a co-student with me of Arabic. We were both Arabic students of Professor Yasin Muhammad. Uh, and uh, Professor Yusuf Wahid is now the Dean of the Faculty of Stellenbosch University in Education. So I, I've asked permission and I received the permission and here's the email that I received. Uh, Hi there, Dr. Arnold. I, hear, I hereby confirm that Leadership Magazine has no problem allowing you to use this article on your blog. I wish you everything of the best in your community development project. Kind regards, David Kappel, editor, Leadership Magazine, uh, from the Cape Media uh, uh, email that I received. So I will then proceed in reading the article that was published um, after I had delivered the talk um, in 2004. Uh, Quality education is a cherished aim. Knowledge is indeed bliss, but there is no royal road to learning. A mere 10% of South Africa's population holds a tertiary qualification. With higher education an option for the privileged few, universities are a rite of passage for those seeking skills in an economy that requires qualified employees. Yet despite these needs, there is still no guarantee of immediate employment for graduates. How do the eager but underprivileged youth earn a tertiary con certificate, certificate in order to become role players as we enter a second decade of democracy? This article was written in 2004 by uh, Arafa Fakir. <coughs> um, Democracy has enfranchised uh, our youth as far as opening up post-apartheid opportunities, but not everyone can take advantage of these benefits due to the increased costs of education. And we know we've got big problems at the moment with the fees must fall in 2017 at the moment, and strikes at universities and disruptions of, 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 uh, of lectures and uh, now even claims that there will be a kind of a free education and they're looking for billions of lands in order to support that and also saying that it's not really true. So be that as it may, there's an enormous amount of problems. This is 2017 now. So how, um, 
democracy has enfranchised our youth as far as opening up post-apartheid opportunities, but not everyone can take advantage of these benefits due to the increasing costs of education. After all, upon graduation, students' top priority is to get rid of the albatross, that is the repayment of student loans. And uh, somehow, in terms of economics, people are saying that the next bubble that will burst is student loans that are not being able to be paid back internationally. Um, after we had a 2008-2009 crash in the economy due to the home loans that were not uh, paid back. Uh, so what remedy is there for those seeking education, but more importantly, personal empowerment? Muhammad Fadil Arnold is a visionary who has initiated the Socio-Economic Education and Environmental Development Initiative known as SEED, S-E-E-E-D, which is a branch of Islamic Education Institute, IES. An educational consultant with three decades of teaching experience under his belt, he runs a grassroots education program for the upliftment of disadvantaged youth. He has laid the foundation for the Fledgling Holistic Skills Program, the IES, to enable the unskilled to empower themselves and their communities in a response to rampant unemployment. Though the program has in, was inaugurated at the recent launch in Burkhab, he has been involved in the conceptualization and the writing of the IES syllabus material for, the, for a number of years. The SEED program includes a holistic adult facilitators course and a holistic integrated investment plan. The course is to motivate the individual to create influence in his or her environment, personal empowerment, mentorship, mediatorship, and the purpose and the purpose of communication. The plan intends to eradicate poverty encourage youth development, create jobs, stimulate the markets in order to become positive and spiritual about material progress and finally environmental progress. Very important point there. The, the plan intends to eradicate poverty, encourage youth development, create jobs, stimulate the market in order to become positive and spiritual about material progress. And finally, environmental progress. Many people are talking about value-based education and uh, the decay of society and somehow people tend to uh, ignore the spiritual uh, value that that is needed in the thinking of people so the program actually um, 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 includes the spirituality and the basic value-based thinking the employment project is arnold's brainchild and he hopes to see it mature to an ever-expanding personal empowerment outreach foundation. Though the groundwork for the project was conceived two years ago, Arnold says his idea has been evolving since the early 1980s. His aim is to upgrade communities in a central youth fund with special emphasis on encouraging the skilled to help the unskilled. Uh, this will provide for an economically equitable society that will be worker-centered in an age that perceives globalization as a us usurpation, usurpation of humanity's uh, conscious. The IAS modus operandi entails the coming together of qualified individuals to share their time and expertise to help train those seeking to empower themselves and contribute to society. It is at, at the, it is at heart a community workshop for society's most important asset, the youth. While getting past its rudimentary stage, Arnold believes in his project and his subjects. Um, presently, there are some 300 participants in the IAS group. Uh, the short-term goal is to ensure qualitative material for workshops and a consistent teacher upliftment program that runs a monthly workshop. Uh, along the long-term goal and the second leg of the project focuses on being a major provider of youth programs and to be a major facilitator in the Western Cape in upmarket jobs. This is not to assume that essential blue-collar jobs are to be snubbed at, but he also encourages youthful candidates to believe that the sky is the limit. The program is an 
eclectic and ambitious itinerary of skills training that will branch into mass media, film, arts, and various other creative projects. Graduates will be able to create jobs for, for themselves and for others in this, and as this will become an employment safety net. Arnold is unfazed by his intention to run programs that are self-sustaining and which require the least support. Also included are free empowerment courses to investors and trainees alike. Young entrepreneurs will be assisted with the networking, the backbone of the project. He says that the work plan, resources, and training for holistic education has spread to the UK, to the USA, and Southern Africa. And in the future, an open university would be at the culminating of the ES IES efforts. Some of the youth employment projects offered by SEED include subsistence gardening, tourism, uh, environmental conservation and neighborhood upliftment. The educational empowerment side provides affordable tutor distance learning through community-based diplomas and degrees in fields as, as diverse as holistic training and learning, holistic health and project management. Some of the youth employment, um, um, according to Arnold, social problems stem from the low self-esteem of individuals in a society. This, culmin this cum cumulative low self-esteem in a society is the result of bureaucratic infrastructures imitating British colonialism. The military terminology was integrated to education and management vocabularies, example, protocol, drill, chain of command, subordinate, superintendent general, director general, etc. These are all terms that are that are very well used in education and in management, but it actually comes from the military. Uh, pupils, parents, workers, and public servants therefore knew their place in the ranking of society. Because quality education from preschool to tertiary levels is linked to affordability, the self-esteem of society is further depleted due to socio-economic conditions. Modern day class structures and political groupings widen the gap, gap between the haves and the have nots. The high cost of, of publications, of books and ma magazines further weakens the self-esteem of the masses and many are not even able to buy the daily newspaper. Most publications are unable to reach the masses. It seems that the elite talks and writes for themselves, for itself. Society's well-to-do also holds exclusive symposiums with such high ticket prices that the masses are further marginalized. Unfortunately, in some instances, education and learning have become money-making businesses. Due to a lack of finance, many are excluded from quality education. Educational skills and illiteracy continue to soar, and the masses are at the mercy of the privilege to read and interpret the social conditions for them. That means for the disadvantaged. This disempowerment this, 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 this empowers the masses further and social frustrations become evident. As a result, crime, drugs, family abuse, emotional, riotous upheaval take place and, know, and go beyond the reasonability. It is such initiatives and commitments that make a difference in com confronting South Africa's challenges. To state the, uh, the obvious, unemployment and poverty are South Africa's major challenges. These obstacles are the grim specter which haunts the country as we mark a third democratic milestone. One must remember this article was written in 2004. While the government has an, and big business debate the issues over whose duty it is to speed up job creation, Millions continuously struggle to ache out a meager existence. With over 30% of South Africa economic, economically unemployed, the situation is dire. Not everyone, however, is prepared to wait for the government of the day to single-handedly provide jobs to the unemployed. Communities must play an active and mentoring role in order to alleviate the scourge. It is imperative that individuals from all walks of life channel their expertise to the unemployed. The youth need a feeling of support and solidarity from their communities. 
The seed project will, inca- will encourage our fledgling generation to work towards a value-driven economy. Important, a value-driven economy. And uh, the further um, uh, uh, features on this particular project can be seen on my blog um, called uh, Work Up Helper. And you can type next to that, uh, no debt youth. In other words, looking at the possibility of asking contributors only for 100 rand a month, not more and not less, maybe less, okay, fine, maybe less, 50 rand even. And that will allow everybody to participate, whether it's a rich people, whether it's companies, etc. 100 rand per month can transform a society. And using that money to employ youth in core features of society, such as um, development of food, frail care, medical assistance, uh, paramedics, um, researchers, tutorship, uh, protection, etc. All of the features that we need, commitment. And the aim is to pay each youth member 3,000 rand a month to do things which are sustainable and developmental to the city, allowing the city to grow at and at the same time save save uh, 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 people an enormous amount of money and time and even lives in the sense of having access to medical care, emergency medical care from people who are employed on the project of no debt youth free of charge. And then making sure that people's lives are honored and they don't sit at, at hospitals for hours before they can actually like, get assistance. The saddest part of it, we have such dire frustration of people to acquire money that they get involved with evil stuff and uh, gangsterism. Uh, just yesterday, a boy of six years old was in an accident. Um, he was transported from the particular area in an ambulance. The ambulance was ambushed, uh, robbed, and in that process, the boy died of his injuries from the car accident that he was uh, that he was injured in. And this has made people completely, uh, uh, you know completely broken in terms of what can be done. And if we wait for others to do it, we are going to lose ourselves. And, and, and I always say that sometimes people vote and they give their responsibility, the, the responsibility they have to make a change to other people who sometimes do not have the interests of people at heart, but just to get into the politics and, and, and get an enormous amount of money for sometimes doing nothing. So it is time for that 50% of the people who don't vote, um, who can actually put that 100 rand aside and make sure that they can employ their people in the communities to do uplifting programs and make the city a city of safety, prosperity, health, and complete development so that people will come back to South Africa and invest even more in terms of knowing that this country has developed itself, not necessarily by government issues, but by community support. And we can do it because uh, people are, uh, earn an enormous amount of money, spend a lot of money going and touring every month and taking trips all over the world. This money could have been put to use amongst developing our people right here. And the more we assist people, the more our people will value us and we will value them. And the city will will be will be valued in terms of all requirements. Um, we have so many issues in terms of service delivery, etc. People do not really put value in people. They look at all the critical issues or the critical thinking features and never look at the positive features of building a society. And we can we can do that. We must remember that sometimes we think that voting empowers you. It disempowers you because you tend to give that ability that you have over to somebody else who's not doing it and he sees to his own family and friends uh, in order to get into position. So there is a... And we, we can't spend time on dealing with the critique and, 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 and you know, researching all the negatives and, and, and losing our energy and our time where we could have spent it positively and developed a society. Um, we've got about, at the moment, uh, we've got about five people that I, that I pilot projected in terms of paying 100 rand a month. And we practically, uh, you know, spent about 14,000 rand applying to employing youth in, 
small projects where it helps him, it gives him a sense of purpose. One must re realize that the educational system uh, in many ways in the Western world is now uh, totally, is now totally uh, internationally, uh, it has failed. And uh, the World Bank's report is asking for new learning cultures. So my time that I spent of 28 years in dealing with a uh, new paradigm of, of thinking in terms of holistic leisure learning, you can Google that as well and you get videos on that, having a complete program of qualitative, integrative, value-based, faith-based education or learning, not education, because education and learning is not the same thing. Education is a controlled construct of human beings for certain purposes that they put in place. Learning is a natural divine feature that is open to everybody on a second by second basis. And unless we realize that every particular feature has a value, we will lose the value of ourselves. And that's what's happening today. So the program is now fully fledged in terms of no debt youth, right up to an holistic senior coaching certificate, which uh, allows the learner to have a knowledge of 16 integrated subjects, a full value of learning, and that will allow him access to more uh, on his CV and uh, allows him to be able to work on the project more holistically, more value-based, more spiritual. And in that way, it just, it just basically develops a society because that energy that is spent by people of that nature is powerful enough to do the transformation and the change. But we have to change our mindset from being dependent uh, on other people to make the change is to become the change agents ourselves and a hundred rand a month is all that I'm asking for and to get away from this large sponsorship that we think about because as a middle class group of people or as a group of people of citizens we have much more information and much more skills and much more money that we can spend in order to help a country and you can see that when there is a disaster in the country the people who give so contributions give more than what governments can do when it comes to really building a society. So that is a, a natural kind of knowledge that we have that shows us that if communities stand together, we can sustain ourselves and even not only sustain ourselves, but develop ourselves higher than, than our expectations. But our hearts must become more positive. Our hearts must become more connected and value-based. And then we can see the value of each one of us. And then when we put a hundred rand down for investment, it becomes the value of a million rand because of the energy of purity that is inside of that. And those are simple features from charity which come from religion. <coughs> <coughs> I think what people must realize, what people do not realize is they try to sidetrack religion all the time, not knowing that if you sidetrack it, you're not gonna learn much because you cannot learn so much from yourself as you can learn from people who have had contact with divine features of knowledge that you can learn from the prophets, etc., who were the first teachers, and the first developers of society. We tend to forget that. We try to marginalize them and say, no, they're just basically a cultural feature. If we come out of that particular um, dependence on other people, dependence on spirituality itself, uh, I mean, on spirit, depending on materialism, and not on the value of what you can put spiritually into material features of a small nature, then you're missing the, then we're missing the boat. But business primarily uh, is to in actual fact share with other people. It has to do with sharing your skills and your abilities to make other people's dreams come true. So yes, we have a uh, complete program that covers all aspects of developing society within the No Debt Youth Program. And I'm hoping that this particular video will, and the article that I've asked Leadership Magazine to actually give me permission to read it, um, will give that kind of uh, impetus for change. And I hope people of all walks of life and all faiths and all uh, skills will start coming together and value each other for who we are and what we can do and stop waiting for other people uh, to do it and say, oh, I pay tax and you must do it. No. You will find in all countries, for instance, the tax is being used in the manner that people who have been elected as being in actual fact what they think is important and you're still waiting. So forget about that money. Let's start spending amongst ourselves and put our, our, our faith in the little that we have, but we can combine it and make our youth feel valued by us as adults. 
And then if they value us as adults and we will not have all this kind of crime, etc., because they can feel that we love them and that we care for them and that we are there to assist them. And then our society can grow through qualitative holistic thinking. I hope it, uh, the article will help in many ways. And I thank you for, for watching and for listening. Please uh, um, give me some comments on my email at mfarnold at gmail.com. Small letters, no spaces in between. And uh, feel free to, to, in actual fact, have symposiums where we can share these ideas. Um, I'm hoping to, to start the process uh, of making it public after 28 years. I think I'm, we're ready now to actually share it with people. And I hope people will be open-hearted to start assisting the program and remember our youth are valuable. If we don't value them, they will not value us. And I don't think anybody wants that in our society. They are special. We are special. We need each other. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you. I hope it will go well. Inshallah.